Um, okay, thank you everyone. Uh, welcome here today. Welcome to this, to this conference. Thank you so much to everyone who is attending here in person. And thank you so much to all of, the, to all of you who are uh, also following this conference online. Um, before starting this meeting, well, I would like to introduce myself. I am Maitor Cartio Garcia, I'm the General Secretary of the Europe Region World Physiotherapy. And I have two points before starting this meeting. The first point is that this meeting, this conference is going to be recorded. So um, you staying here are granting us access to distribute this, this recording of the session. So please be aware of that. And the second point is that due to the commitments of the two members of the European Parliament that will be addressing the audience today, we needed to rearrange the, the agenda. So um, first of all, Rosa Estaraz will be speaking about the role of physical activity in people with disabilities and the elderly. And I wanted to, first of all, thank her for hosting this meeting. So muchísimas gracias, Rosa, for hosting the meeting. And the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you. First of all, thank you, Angel Rebollo and Aitor and the organization for this conference. I think it's uh, very important to have the discussion about, uh, about this. Um, I have had, in 10 minutes, I have a vote in employment committee about violence against women, and the report is mine. This is the, the reason. <laughs> Uh, excuse me, only, only I have, um, I will be here 10 minutes, but I follow all, all, our, all your discussions. In September 2022, the EU Commission released the latest report on sport and physical activity in Europe following a survey carried out in the 27 member organization to citizens from different social and democratic categories. The outcomes from this survey are really worrying. Despite the efforts by the EU and member states, 45% of the respondents reported that they never exercise. Some interesting findings from this report are the following. 20% of respondents mentioned a lack of interest in doing physical activity but 14% of the respondent answered that having a disability or illness is what is preventing them from exercising. The most popular settings in which to exchange in a sport or on another physical activity or a park, outdoors, etc. The EU must ensure that effective policies and initiatives are implemented in order to reverse this trend. It, it is not acceptable that people with uh, disabilities feel that they cannot exercise because of their condition. It's not possible. We have to change this reality. The reports show that the most popular setting to engage in physical activity is outdoors. Citizens must ensure that it is easy for the citizens who wish to engage in physical activity outdoors to do so by identifying and or creating safe and inclusive environments where this is possible. Today, we will be presenting the outcomes of Enable City uh, is a project uh, with the participation of Erasmus Plus. Uh, it's an instrument that has brought together healthcare professionals, universities, and cities in order to come up with good practices and recommendations for the promotion of physical activity in urban environments for persons with disabilities and uh, senior citizens. I, I wish uh, good works and I follow all, all your activity today and the rest of the year. And thank you so much. You know that uh, I am a vice president of the Intergroup of Disabilities and um, my, my, my country has a very great organization, ONCE. On the national, I think, uh, six, how many years? Oh, 80, 85. 
activators of life. And for me, Onze is an example uh, to work with about disabilities or about dependence or about vulnerable uh, citizens. So uh, enjoy with discussions and I follow all your work. Thank you so much. Excuse me. Thank you so much for your intervention, Rosan. We will not steal any more of your time. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank you. Thank you, Aitor. Bye. Bye. Okay. Indeed, from the Europe Region World Physiotherapy, we grasped this idea that Rosa was speaking about right now. And, and we created the project proposal three years ago, together with five other, other partners. We submitted the proposal to the Erasmus Plus funding instrument, and we actually won funding, funding for this. This proposal was accepted, and that's how Enable Cities started two years and a half ago. <coughs> and today we are presenting the results from, from Enable Cities, this project. But first of all, I would like to, to put some context to, to, to what Rosa was mentioning. And I have a, a brief introduction to give you, because the context is, is quite worrying. It poses some challenges, but also some opportunities, uh, and we need to be able to, to grasp these, these opportunities. First of all, and according to the latest population projections issued by Eurostat, it is estimated that by 2050, 30% of the EU population will be senior citizens. This is people who are 65 or older. The EU Commission and WHO have highlighted in their latest reports that this population aging is going to lead to an increase in the number of people with disabilities. It is then clear that this represents a large and growing segment of the general population. At the same time, reports from the United Nations show that more than 80% of the European population is expected to live in urban environments by 2050, 80% of the population. This demographic, this demographic shift highlights the importance of addressing the needs of people with disabilities and the elderly within urban environments. With regards to physical activity, regular physical activity has been shown to be essential for maintaining good health and well-being. Engaging in physical activity can help prevent NCDs such as cardiovascular diseases, diabetes, and obesity, as well as improve mental health. Physical activity is vital for people with disabilities, not only to promote health and prevent disease, but also to reduce the number of secondary conditions that result from an initial disability. Nevertheless, as Rosa was mentioning, studies show that people with, disability, with disabilities are often less physically active than those without a disability, and this might be because they feel that they cannot exercise with their disability. I have a point to make with regards to, to EU funding for this kind of um, issues. I, I strongly believe that more investment in prevention, education, and physical activity programs is needed. I know that the EU Commission is doing a big, a big effort, but I also believe that a bigger effort can actually be made. The EU for Health program and other funding EU instruments, such as Erasmus Plus, which is the instrument through which the project, which results are presented today, is funded, are providing funding for this. But sometimes I feel that a clear relation between physical activity and overall health of the population should be made because you have this Erasmus Plus instrument that is funding a sport and physical activity programs, but maybe sometimes there is no clear relation between this Erasmus Plus funding and the EU for Health program. Mm. Clearer relationships and bridges should be, should be made and should be built. This can lead to synergies between the different programs and a, and a bigger impact could be made through, through these synergies. One of the main social implications of an aging population is um, the risk on social security and healthcare systems. It is a fact that 
aging population actually put in risk healthcare systems of countries. As people age, they require more medical care and assistance with daily activities. In this regard, it is key that member states integrate all healthcare professionals in the national healthcare systems to alleviate the pressure on medical doctors. In this context, I need to say that physiotherapy can be a very cost-effective option to tackle this issue, and I believe that Esther Mary Darcy will address this in, um, in her talk later in, during this conference. So this is the context that I wanted to, to give you, and, and now I think we can, we can go to the next point of the, of the agenda, which is uh, the introduction of, to the Enable Cities project um, and its partners. And I am glad to introduce you to my colleague, Eleanor Legot, who is the project manager for, for Enable Cities. And she will be presenting the objectives that we had with this project, as well as the partners. And she will give an overview on the intellectual outputs that we have developed from this project. So, Eleanor, thank you so much for everything. The floor is yours. Thank you. Um, good morning to everyone. I am pleased to give you um, an overview of what the Enable Cities project is um, and, to explain you, and to explain you more in detail um, the various actions that have been implemented during, during the project. So to begin with the project Enable Cities, developing inclusive urban environments for physical activity for people with disabilities and senior citizens, is an um, EU-funded project that was launched in January 2021. And as Ada said, the project had lasted um, two, two and a half years, and it was coordinated by um, the Europe Region World Physiotherapy. Um, so in it, with the project Enable Cities is an intersectoral partnership of six organizations from five different EU um, countries, and they all joined the force together to promote physical activity within urban environments um, among people with disabilities with a special focus on elderly people. Um, so, the overall objective was to first promote and enable physical activities in open urban areas, as I said, for people with uh, physical disabilities and for the elderly. Uh, it was also to build healthy, active and inclusive cities. And by a healthy, active and inclusive city, the project partners uh, understand a city that is uh, continuously creating and improving opportunities um, to enable all its citizens to be physically active in day-to-day -day lives. And, um, yeah, the, the, the third overall objective was to overcoming the barriers that discourage uh, physical activities in, in cities among persons with disabilities and, um, and the elderly. Um, so, the, um, the urban context uh, was given priority due to the increasing rates of um, urban growth uh, urban population growth, a rising inequality and vulnerability uh, to social exclusion, mainly for people with disabilities and older people. And as said Ata, um, they really represent a large and uh, growing segment of the general population, and they are often less physically active, um, especially less physically active than those without a disability. So to uncover the needs and priorities and improve the level of their engagement, um, so the engagement of elderly and people with disabilities who are the main target groups. Um, the project partners designed and tried to facilitate urban environments and measures that encourage physical uh, activity by carrying out a series of activities deliverables throughout the, um, the project lifetime. So next slide, please. Um, so in this project, in this regard, sorry, the, um, the project was organized around three main phases. So the preparation, the, the preparation phase, the implementation phase, and the evaluation phase. So during the, the first phase, the preparation one, uh, the partners carried out a set of preparatory, uh, pre sorry, a set of preparatory work and knowledge to pave the way uh, for the implementation phase. Uh, so they develop um, practical intervention methodology documents and a citizen engagement strategy uh, in which people with disabilities is given a voice to, to contribute towards the promotion of, um, of healthy, active and disabled cities. The um, consortium then moved to the second phase, which is the implementation phase. Um, and this phase aimed to implement the project 
uh, pilot physical activity action within the two pilot territories of the project. So the, municipal, the municipality of Bologna, that is based in Italy, and the municipality of uh, Sevilla La Nueva, which is based in um, Spain. So this phase started with training for the pilot territories in order to deliver the developed methodology, the developed uh, practical intervention methodology, and the, the CES, the citizen engagement strategy that I previously mentioned. Um, and those, those documents were um, delivered to professionals who helped to implement the project uh, pilot actions. So um, to physiotherapists who supported elderly and people with disabilities, and communication manager from the local organization who were involved in the rolling out of the project citizen engagement strategy. Um, this training then leads to the implementation of um, two rounds of pilot physical activity actions within the two municipalities. So the first round from April to July 2022 and the second one from September to December 2022. Um, so physiotherapists, with the support of uh, communication managers from the local um, authorities, provided physical activity exercises to the target groups of the project, so to the elderly and um, people with disabilities. Um, the implementation of pilot actions were uh, highly supported by the um, Enable Cities app, uh, which has been evaluated through this month to allow the engagement and adherence uh, of the members of the target populations. Um, so in parallel to the implementation phase, the partners um, worked on the evaluation phase. They reviewed, rectified the document developed, um, so including the methodology, the citizen engagement strategy, and, uh, and the app. So we learned from the errors and achievement detects during the, the implementation of the project to update in those, those documents. Um, so yeah, the main goal of this evaluation phase was to equip partners with um, the right tools to analyze their own experience um, when piloting and yeah, sharing and spreading the learning um, of those documents. Um, next slide, please. So I would like just to go into more details uh, of these uh, three activities, um, which are the practical intervention methodology, the citizen engagement strategy, and the Enable Cities app. So to start with the design of the um, practical intervention methodology, to give you an overview, it's um, a methodology that provides physical activity exercises for elderly and people with disabilities, um, and that are, I mean, those exercises exercises, sorry, are adapted to the urban environment and the infrastructures of the, um, of the two pilot uh, territories, so Bologna and Sevilla La Nueva. Um, this document gathers scientific technical information that are necessary to, developing the, to develop the, the activities uh, corresponding to the implementation phase of the pilot territories. Um, and the methodology um, is strongly supported by the knowledge produced within the, prep within the preparation phase. So um, it has been supported by the desk research and the target, target group's needs analysis. The first um, document aimed to gathering good practices in organizing physical activity for the main target groups. And the second one, the target group's needs analysis, um, aim to identify the existing barriers, so individual social barriers, uh, and need faced by the main target groups. Um, in addition, the methodology includes the characteristic considered necessary for the app, um, as well as indication and on its structure and operation. So the document provided, for example, um, a general recommendation for physical activity, um, provided also key guidelines for safe physical activity, healthy habits to, to improve the quality of life. Uh, the document provides recommendation to design exercises for older adults to, to improve their the strengths, flexibility, balance. Um, next slide, please. And um, when designing the methodology, the, the partners also took into uh, account the specificity of the target groups. So they decided to uh, divide into five main categories um, the, the target groups according to the different to the different um, physically states fitness states and according to the different um, functional situations 
So all those elements were taken into account um, within the, um, the to build the, the enable cities app. Um, then we can. I will give you an overview of the citizen engagement strategy. Uh, next slide, please. Um, which aim to uh, improve opportunities to enable uh, people with disabilities and senior citizens to be physically active in in day to day life. So um, to pursue this objective, the document encourage uh, this target group to actively take part in making decisions. So about we thinking, for example, existing um, urban environments and infrastructures. Um, it's a novel approach, uh, which is based on um, on local context, because this document is integrating the promotion of the benefits of sports, try to identify and and overcome the barriers with the relevant stakeholders. Um, next slide, please. So as for the um, first document, as for the um, practical intervention methodology document, uh, this strategy was built taking into account the finding of the conduct desk research and on uh, the results of the needs analysis. So the desk research contributed to gather knowledge, good practices, um, and information of previous and current uh, experiences and programs that have been implemented in, in Europe. Um, so, the, um, as you can see on the PowerPoint, um, we can see that the partners mainly focus, I mean, to gather knowledge and, and, and yeah, information, they mainly focus on, for example, communication campaigns that are promoting um, the engagement of people with disabilities and elderly people. They also focused on the effective methodologies to, to foster elderly and people with disabilities adherence to physical activity within urban environments. Um, and regarding the needs analysis, um, th this document allowed to, um, to the partners to identify the barriers which cause um, an absence of participation, of participation in, in physical activity. Next slide, please. Um, so they identify three main barriers, uh, which are the um, intrapersonal barriers, uh, interpersonal one, and the external factors uh, that can become barriers. So for the first one, it's about the factors um, that are determining whether a person will want to experiment with a new activity or event, um, if they're likely to, to, to persevere with something they have already tried out. So this includes, for example, um, attitudes, beliefs, knowledge, past experience. Regarding the second barriers, the interpersonal barriers, um, it's, it's about motivation for engaging in sports um, because it's also influenced by people's social environments. And um, regarding the, the, um, the last barriers, um, it's about all the external factors, including the nature of the physical environment, so the quality of service provision, um, also, the existence of stimuli such as adverts or role models promoting activities or the benefits of physical activities. Um, so, yeah, to, to summarize, the, um, implementing a, a citizen engagement strategy can be useful to, to better understand and identify existing barriers to participation in physical activity um, and in sports in a given city. Um, next slide, please. Regarding the Enable Cities app, um, which is the, yeah, it, it's it's one of the main um, intellectual output of, of the project, uh, which allow the, the engagement and adherence of the members of the target population in the practice of physical activity. And uh, the app has been built with the precious help of the University of Bologna, which is based in Italy. Um, and it provides users different sort of information um, of uh, facilities, such as a map to indicate urban environments um, and infrastructure that are available to practice physical activity. The, the app is also um, displayed video guidelines um, that can be displayed for the users to explain to them how to practice physical activity. There is also a communication chat uh, service. Um, so next slide, please. Um, yes, next slide again, please. Sorry. So, yeah, as you can see uh, on, on this slide, you have the menu of the app with different tab. 
Um, and yeah, for example, if you click on the homepage, we'll have access to the, the map I was talking about. And um, for example, if you take the example of Sevilla and Nueva, you have different points of interest that are displayed and you can click on them and know what, um, what you can use to practice sport. What in, like which infrastructures? So it's it's really useful for for the users. They also have access to uh, an history tab that are gathering all the previous uh, um, exercises performed uh, within the app. And one of the specificities of of this really useful tool is that um, depending on the category uh, assigned to the user, the exercises will be different. So um, yeah, the, the all the categories. Uh, I propose taking into account the um, functional capacity, autonomy, and level of um, the target groups. Um, next slide, please. So um, now I think that um, is more than time to introduce you to the partners of the project. So as I said, it's um, th the project is gathering six partners from five uh, different EU uh, states. Um, and they successfully contribute to the construction of these three intellectual outputs I was talking about, uh, thanks to their knowledge, experience, and uh, hard work. So, um, first of all, I will introduce um, ONSE, so the University School of Physiotherapy ONSE, um, which is a university that depends on the Autonoma University of Madrid and is financed by the Spanish National Organization for the Blind. Um, so this center is dedicated to teach physiotherapy to, to blind students and they really support um, the implementation of pilot uh, physical activity action in Sevilla and Nueva in Spain. Then we have the um, Red, Red Boot uh, University Medical Center, which is one of the eight university medical center in the Netherlands. Um, so the university combines uh, patient care, research and uh, education and um, is mainly in charge uh, I mean, during the project was mainly in charge of the evaluation process. Um, then we have the two pilot territories of the of the project. So um, first, the um, municipality of Sevilla Nueva, uh, which is based in Spain, and the, universe, the municipality, sorry, of uh, Bologna in Italy, uh, that has a long tradition of putting healthcare and protection of its um, citizens at the center of its administrative mission, and. And then we have the um, we have Sport and Citizenship Association, which is a European think tank, um, and the work is dedicated to the study of European public uh, policies in the field of sports and the promotion of uh, sports societal impacts. <clears throat> then, um, so the coordinator uh, we have um, it is the European Foundation for Physiotherapy and Physical Activity. Um, so. Uh, yeah, so this organization, which is linked to the Europe Region World Physiotherapy, is a non-profit um, organization and a non-governmental organization that represents a uh, physiotherapy profession at European level. And yeah, I, I gave you an overview of the, um, the old consortium of, of the Enable Cities project. And just bef before giving the floor to Marcia from the, from the municipality of, of Bologna, um, I would like to comment on the target groups of the Enable Cities project because, uh, so as I already mentioned, the main target group is um, people uh, with disabilities and elderly people, but I think um, it's also important to highlight that the project benefits to other um, uh, target groups such as physiotherapists. Uh, they had the, the opportunity to improve their knowledge and skills on providing physical activity for elderly and people with disabilities. There are also families, friends, uh, caregivers um, that are really helpful uh, to support uh, the main target group of the project. Um, and then you also have citizens and general public. Um, and uh, last but not least, uh, local regional administrations, uh, such as um, the municipality of Bologna and Sevilla Nueva that can bring a uh, lot of support to implement those kind of actions. So, yeah, thank you very much, and the floor is yours. Okay, thank you so much, Eleanor. You managed to summarize a two years and a half project in 50 minutes. So <laughs> that, was, that was amazing, thank you so much. Um, as I said before, Eleanor is a project manager for Enable Cities and project manager within the Europe region World Physiotherapy, which is a coordinator of this project. Um, 
Okay, we can go, I think, to the next point of the agenda, which is the, um, the experience from the ground on rolling out of the um, physical activity exercises in urban settings. Um, as Eleanor rightly mentioned, during the, um, the first phases of the Enable Cities project, we developed a series of documents that we needed to test in order to see if they were valid or not. So that's why we decided to implement these pilot actions in two different municipalities, one in Bologna and uh, one in Spain, oh, well, sorry, one in Italy, which is Bologna, and one in Spain, which is Sevilla Nueva. There were two different urban contexts. Bologna was a bigger city, while Sevilla Nueva was a more, a smaller city. So in this point of the agenda, we will speak about the, um, we will do a summary of how were the training sessions for, for, the, um, for the people in, in these municipalities, in these in this pilot territories. We will also do a summary of which were the pilot physical activity actions, which were developed in these urban environments. And we will also um, give you an overview of the experience that we have on the usage of the project, on, of the project's mobile app. Um, for that, we have uh, Irene Rodriguez, who is the um, Director of International Relations, Professor and Scientific Researcher at the University of Isotropia Fonce. And we have also Marcia Betoki, who is the Healthy Aging Projects Coordinator at Healthy Cities Unit, Welfare and Community Wellbeing Promotion Department of the Municipality of Bologna. So the, the floor is yours. Yes, thank you. Good morning. All of you, I'm very pleased to be uh, here at the final conference of the uh, project in the cities that uh, all the consortium really uh, uh, has done a hard work, really, not only uh, for the cities, uh, for the pilot cities, but also for the other uh, partners that uh, contributed uh, to the development uh, of all output, outputs. Uh, and uh, uh, documents uh, related uh, to, uh, to the project. Um, my task this morning is to, to give a brief overview of the implementation of the training sessions that are the first step in order to implement, uh, to carry out, uh, to put in place uh, the pilot actions in the two different cities, uh, Bologna, and Sevilla La Nueva. Uh, next uh, slide, please. And uh, first of all, what was the objective of the training sessions? To deliver the project practical intervention methodology, methodology one of the uh, key outputs of the project, uh, uh, to the physical activity managers, then to the experts in physical activities uh, involved in the conduction of the uh, two pilot rounds uh, of, the, uh, of the trial uh, that will be involved uh, that, uh, in, uh, in the implementation of the project. And then to introduce another key core output of the project, the citizen engagement strategy, communication managers, these stakeholders, figures uh, uh, from local organization working with elderly and disabled people. Uh, to, the, uh, to the same uh, uh, sessions uh, were organized and developed uh, in two days program. Um, uh, one session devoted to PANS uh, as uh, the acronym of physical activity manager managers and uh, uh, the other one to communication managers. Uh, the sessions in Bologna were video recorded uh, um, to have the possibility in COVID times uh, we were also in COVID times in that period, to replicate, if needed, online training sessions. This was useful because the start of the pilot actions were postponed because of the pandemic situation. And from the beginning of January to March of the 2021, um, 22, sorry, and uh, this made possible to resume the content of the training sessions 
uh, with uh, uh, PAMs and communication managers who made themselves av available on a voluntary, voluntary basis to participate in the trial. Uh, next slide, please. And then uh, who are PAMs? Uh, are um, ex experts in the promotion of health and physical activity, uh, taking part in the implementation of the pilot actions. In particular, health professionals, mainly physiotherapists, physios, and other professionals such as kinesiologists, graduates in movement sports sciences, supporting health professionals in guiding participants in the, uh, in the sessions, in the physical activity sessions. Next slide, please. And uh, uh, some topics, uh, specific topics, uh, were dealt with uh, in the training sessions devoted to uh, physical activity manager, aims of the project and the pilot rounds and participation groups, benefits, the benefits of physical activity, thus providing PAMS uh, with a base of knowledge of the uh, principles of the project and some tools to um, to help them to answer questions from participants and above all to motivate them to go on and participate in the, uh, in the activities. Uh, knowledge on physical activity, general who recommendations on physical activity, ways of grading the exercises put in place, the intensity, how to progress through the training sessions safely to avoid injury. And this was the, uh, the core uh, task of physios to, um, to, uh, over, uh, to uh, supervise the security of participants in doing the exercise and functional categories in the project and also the introduction to the general aspects of the Enable Cities app. Um, then, next slide please, PAMS uh, communication managers who are these figures, key players in the projects uh, in the development of the pilot actions for engaging, as I, as I, I have already said, the interest of participants, uh, uh, motivating them in going on, trying to facilitate people enrolled in the physical activity sessions and not to give up. In particular, these figures were mainly represented in the project by volunteers from local associations, organizations dealing with elderly people, and disabled persons, as well as bridging, fig <clears throat> excuse me, bridging figures in touch with the target population uh, in, uh, involved in the project. Next slide, please. Um, then a training session and a doctrine session was devoted to communication managers in order to introduce the output, the core output of the uh, strategy to the communication managers for, uh, to, uh, in order to, um, uh, to, to, uh, to enroll, to, to, to motivate elderly and disabled people to uh, attend the, the sessions. <clears throat> and then to provide the professionals with communication tools and methodologies for the engagement of the target population and for maintaining and favoring their motivation to continue to going on and not to give up during the session. Next, please. Okay. And uh, what was the key aspects uh, focused on the training sessions for communication managers? The implications of adapting and uh, hooking uh, an enrolling strategy. What is required from these figures? opportunities of implementing an engagement strategy, physical activities for the target group, what were the steps of the, uh, of the pilot actions. Next, please. During the second day's program, joint actions were also envisaged 
in the training session, joint meeting between PAMS and communication managers to know each other and create a basis for smooth cooperation during the pilot rounds, and also to exchange ideas, travel feedback on possible locations for the development of the uh, physical activity sessions with the target population participating in the project. Uh, then uh, we were uh, envisaged also visits to some outdoor and indoor spaces. We have to underline that uh, in the project, uh, the, uh, the key uh, settings were outdoor uh, situations. But uh, we envisage also indoor locations uh, to anticipate bad climate uh, situations that uh, could endanger participants' health condition. And uh, also we are uh, scheduled during this second day uh, some visit to some outdoor locations, mainly public parks, that have uh, led to the selection of some of them uh, these uh, green areas to be mapped and uploaded on the app of the project as points of interest where to go for practicing the physical activity. That's a brief overview of what we have done for this uh, first step uh, of the implementation of pilot actions. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to you, Irene. Thank you. Thank you for the second step of the implementation. Yes. Thank you, Marcia. Thank you to you, Irene. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm very happy to be here in the European Parliament. It's been this has been a great experience for me, and I hope to give you a clear and mm. short <laughs> overview of. Uh, what the, the work we've done uh, for the implementation phase and the pilot actions we took um, during this, this project. First of all, I would like to help uh, to thank, sorry, to thank uh, all the physios and other health professionals that volunteered uh, to, to do this project because without them, uh, we couldn't do anything. So thank you to IFI, the Italian Association of Physiotherapy, and also to officials in my university who volunteered, uh, interns and students, and also uh, other students from um, University Europea of Madrid who helped us carry out uh, this, man this um, project. So, uh, next slide, please. Um, uh, some of this information you already heard from Eleonor and also from Marcia, so I will go very quickly over it. Um, just to mention that uh, the implementation phase consisted in two pilot rounds. Uh, these pilot rounds were uh, of uh, 16 weeks each. Uh, the first two weeks and the last two weeks were devoted to organizational and evaluation purposes, leaving the, the resting uh, 12 weeks uh, to, for the physical activity actions themselves. Um, during these 12 weeks, uh, we designed a mixture of face-to-face -face session and also autonomy physical activity sessions by the users of the app with control calls from the physical activity managers. Um, well, uh, as Marcia said, we had uh, two pilot territories uh, Bologna and Sevilla la Nueva, and we uh, could uh, have eight groups of participants in total, five from Bologna, from two city districts, Savannah and Navile, city districts, and three from Sevilla la Nueva, just one city district there, because it's a very small town. <laughs> so, and then, um, uh, as Marcia highlighted, uh, we wanted to have a physical activity, mainly outdoors, because as you all know, and ITOR also mentioned it before, 
uh, literature shows that the benefits of physical activity grows, increase when the physical activity is done outdoors. We also wanted to make uh, or add another uh, factor to this, which was the socialization part. And that's why we wanted to make this session in groups to uh, try to engage uh, users and um, have a, a more uh, socialization part and fun part to, to the physical activity. So we did the, all the pilot actions were took place in parks or other, other public urban green spaces when the weather conditions permitted it. Okay, next slide, please. So uh, the main aim of these two pilot rounds was uh, were to test the Enabled Cities app and the project intervention methodology, which was our intellectual outputs, main of them. Uh, we developed with a lot of hard work, as Marcia mentioned. And um, specifically in the first pilot round, we wanted to adapt the project intervention methodology to the uh, sites where the physical activities were going to take place. Uh, we were very, um, well, we wanted to um, underline very strongly that we wanted to have accessible parks because um, we wanted to uh, deliver these physical activity sessions not only to elders, but only to people with different functional capacities and disabled people. So we, we wanted to have people that could attend these sessions uh, which are in a wheelchair or they are blind or um, these are different different um, functionalities and um, we, uh, this we, with this first pilot round we tested and made some changes to the practical intervention methodology and to the app with the feedback from users pams and communication managers from the project and made some little changes to some adaptations to this uh, for the second pilot round and well uh, the structure of this pilot or this physical activity sessions mainly was divided between um, first a first joint session with everybody physical activity managers communication managers and participants to create some sort of intervention units so um, groups, that groups um, with uh, persons who had similar functionalities to, to, be, to make the, the physical activity sessions go more smoothly and to, to make people who can relate to each other more and to have a, a, some kind of communication channels going on throughout the, the, all the participants. And then we had um, also started the physical or the physical sessions with face-to-face -face sessions. At the beginning, we tried to do uh, more face-to-face -face sessions to create more engagement in the in the participants and create these bonds, strong bonds from them. And then the idea was to uh, progressively decrease the number of face-to-face -face sessions and start doing more autonomous sessions with just uh, control calls from PAMS to make sure that uh, or to know if participants were continuing doing physical activity. So next slide please. With this general structure we designed this uh, the first pilot round we had first four weeks uh, with two face-to-face -face sessions per week with the PAMS and the, then the eight remaining um the eight remaining uh, weeks with just one face-to-face -face session uh, per week uh, during the sessions uh, the users did the training uh, session that i will explain later and they started getting familiar with the app in the first pilot round okay then in the second pilot round as you can see we decreased the number of face-to-face -face sessions in the beginning, it was even less face-to-face -face sessions, but with the feedback from the first pilot round, uh, that was very strongly asked for, uh, for the, by, the, by the users, we decided to increase the number of face-to-face -face sessions, especially because uh, between these two pilot rounds, we had three months 
of evaluation phase. So they kind of felt that uh, they would forget a little bit about the app and about the, um, the structure of the physical activity sessions. So we wanted for them to feel more secure and to feel for more confidence with the use of the app. So we decided to implement this small change. So we had uh, the first eight weeks with one face-to-face -face session and only the last four weeks of the second pilot round on, on, of the program were with a autonomous use of the app by the users and uh, with just control calls from communication managers or from physical activity managers just to encourage them to continue doing physical activity and to know if they had any problems with the app or any doubts and try to give them some counsel about this. So next slide, please. And now I will give you briefly uh, what was the what we thought about would be a very complete physical activity session. Um, I will not enter a lot in this because my partner Joao will go through this in more detail later. So just to give you an idea, we structured the session with uh, one um, starting with warm up. Then we did a mixture of balance exercises, strength exercises, and flexibility exercises, uh, mainly short effort, what we call short effort um, exercise. And then we had uh, around 20 to 30 minutes of uh, aerobic uh, exercise, long effort, uh, with walking. Normally it was walking, but it could be with biking or whatever other sport. Uh, you, you like to practice. And we actually added some a special thing to, to, the, to the structure that was some group exercises, like something like games or something more fun to enhance and, and create more uh, socialization and make the sessions more fun. And also the feedback that we received from the participants was that they liked this very much and it was it, they they reclaimed more of this, so we were very happy with the with the idea. And in the, at the end, we have a session about around forty to sixty minutes per day. So the next slide, please. So just to give you, if you want to implement a program like this or start trying to make your community be more active and start doing more physical activity. I, uh, we give you, but from what we learned, I can give you these four tips to go home. <laughs> so the first one is uh, try to make your groups as more similar as possible in their functional capacities. Because if not, it would it's very difficult for them to try to adapt exercises to their different situations. Uh, some of your users will be doing one thing, another very different thing. So that complicates a lot and normally it makes participants to drop out. So try to make more, uh, more homogeneous groups. The second one is to try to add fun and socialization components to your training for them to engage more and make them something fun for them. So they will want or they will really want to go. Then uh, this is a key aspect, I think. Uh, I remember some a pers person, especially from Bologna, Lola. Uh, so try to engage someone that is a very um, involved person in their communities. Because if you involve this person, sh they will drag all your other participants, all your other uh, people from around. And um, you will have a, more success and in your implementation of physical activity. You know? That's what we want to, to, for people to do more physical activity and uh, improve their health. So this is, this is key, really this is key. And also the other part that is, is very, very, really important is at the starting, uh, especially is the figure of the PAMs, the physios or other health professionals that are involved in physical activity because participants feel more secure with this. They feel more confident to go and start doing physical activity. And when they see that there's no problem with it, they continue doing it. So this is all from my part. Thank you very much.
let's continue with an overview of uh, the experiences and feedback on the usage of the app during the second pilot round in Bologna. Okay, then uh, between uh, the first and the second pilot round, uh, there will be the uh, launch event on the mobile app. And uh, this uh, will occur on the 20th of September, 2022 in Bologna and uh, the municipality of Bologna hosted the consortium of Enable Cities project and all the persons involved so far in the, uh, the development and implementation of uh, the project and also local participants, uh, interested stakeholders uh, of the city, physios uh, and other health professionals uh, and uh, uh, other professionals involved in the project in order to launch uh, one of the key outputs of the project, that is to say the app, the Enable Cities app. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, thanks to the technical support of the University of Bologna, the developer of the app, the consortium has been working uh, to finalize the implementation of the app to be tested uh, in this sec second round. Uh, the event uh, was also the occasion to present uh, the first outcomes uh, of the uh, first pilot round, as already highlighted by uh, Irede, uh, in both uh, pilot territories, Bologna and Sevilla La Nueva. The event was well attended uh, at local level, and uh, there were, in addition to professions, many local stakeholders interested uh, and involved uh, in, uh, in the pilot. Next, please. We can skip because Irene have already um, highlighted uh, the schedule of the two pilot rounds. Um, in the second pilot round, that was more sh uh, shorter than uh, the first one, there was uh, uh, um, the first month of, uh, of the, um, resuming the program carried out in the first uh, pilot round. And uh, uh, in order also to, finalize, uh, to, fi uh, to familiarize with the, uh, with the app, then to download the app through the tutorial, adopted, developed for the, uh, for the occasions, for viewing the functionalities with the support of the PANS. Of the, uh, then in the, in the next weeks, uh, there was a, review, uh, a reduction of uh, uh, sessions conducted by PANS uh, and uh, uh, more and more um, uh, progressively autonomy in the group to do alone uh, um, in autonomy uh, the set of exercise, exercises using uh, the tool, the app. Next, please. Uh, sorry, okay, it's okay. Uh, in Bologna, two uh, city districts involved in the project, um, Nabile and Savena, five groups, three in, Sa uh, three in uh, Navile district and two in Savena. Each group supervised by a team of PAMS, uh, uh, PAMS uh, uh, physio supervised uh, the, um, the, uh, the participants in doing physical activity and uh, also with the support of uh, some kinesiologists. Different locations selected, uh, more uh, out, uh, outdoor situation, but also some indoor situations in order uh, because of uh, also the period uh, scheduled for the second part of the round. Uh, if you can see in the in the slide, uh, I, uh, I uh, would like to uh, to highlight that uh, these pictures were um, shot in uh, in uh, one of the public parks in Navile City District, where. Uh, Kabura Park, and thanks to the cooperation of a local association, this is an area where there is a cycle, uh, motor track for the, for the elderly and post-traumatized uh, people, consisting of a set of, uh, of equipment, of facilities, designed specifically for the use by adults with varying degrees of self-sufficiency. So uh, there was a, a point of interest uh, well mapped uh, on the app, okay? And uh, where the group 
used to, to, uh, to do the activity. Next, please. Well, the start and the later situation that I could find around, the start situation, many participants in, in different groups already experienced the first uh, uh, pilot round. And uh, anyway, new participants attend the, uh, the second pilot round that was more challenges because of the use of the app, obviously. And uh, uh, participants quite motivated to start the physical activity and, uh, uh, and pens introducing uh, the use of the app. Um, uh, one aspect that has to be uh, highlighted is that since not all participants have a performing smartphone or a smartphone at all, the performing mobiles were shared by the participants in order to, uh, to, um, to learn doing exercises through the tool, through the mobile, and uh, um, uh, learning progressively to do exercises in autonomy. And so reducing, meanwhile, the uh, conduction, the face-to-face -face conduction by the pants. Next, please. Later situation. Yes. Um, in the um, half November, beginning of December, PAMS began to monitor, to, to monitor the progress of the physical activities by from the uh, participants using the app, leaving uh, people more and more alone to do by uh, themselves the activity and uh, only to check uh, at the um, before the end of the sessions uh, if everything was going on well and to check the the progress uh, of the um, of the use of the app uh, all this to further motivate uh, the participants to do physical activities using uh, the tool and to coordinate uh, uh, with each other also in conducting the set of exercises in trying to team up with volunteers and communication managers as a facilitator to attend uh, the groups. Uh, some groups uh, of the five uh, result, uh, three in particular, more responsive and ready to handle the increased autonomy, also through the app. Whereas the uh, other ones struggling most to make the leap to autonomy, considering uh, um, the aspect of the cost and attendance in the weekly session, which in some groups didn't occur due to health family problems. Then in some groups, some participants uh, didn't attend uh, steadily the exercise. And so uh, they um, uh, struggled more to... Uh, uh, to do li li the leap to a more autonomy in using the app. Uh, some uh, feedback considerations. Uh, uh, next, please. Perhaps, uh, yes. Uh, no, the, uh, the one before. Some feel, uh, were consideration of the second pilot round, yes. Uh, participants were, as already highlighted by Irene, very satisfied with, uh, with experts uh, and uh, uh, physios uh, and other uh, professionals uh, that uh, were involved uh, uh, on a voluntary basis uh, on the pilot round. And the, uh, we noticed a good uh, uh, teamwork uh, in conducting the session between the two figures the two uh, professional figures, figures as supervisors, uh, and uh, uh, also the other professional, the kinesiologist, uh, as a, uh, supporting uh, figures in the, uh, in the, uh, during the session. Uh, three groups of participants were more responsive in autonomy and testing the app. Another group was the frailest of the five and needed to be more supervised by physium to participate, to practice exercises in total safety, and also to use the app. 
Um, some feedback, next slide, please. Some feedback and suggestions of the app uh, the, uh, from the group. Uh, the guided training on the app uh, resulted quite clear, basic, but uh, as a supplementary support to the supervision of an expert. App functionality, uh, functionalities, basic enough, and the app is uh, useful as a tool for those who have learned the basic movements to do activities on their own. The guided training is very basic, but without variation. Uh, the, the app is undoubtedly for the, the, all these groups an incentive to go out, to socialize, not to stay alone at home. And uh, uh, the, uh, a need uh, uh, was uh, uh, highlighted for an audio description about the set of exercise because uh, to, to manage better the uh, training session, the, uh, to, to follow better the, uh, the set and the sequence of exercises. Another aspect highlighted by the groups, increasing the variety of exercises, Having new exercises, you have more motivation to adapt the, the app undoubtedly to any smartphone, even to less performing ones. And the app should require also trading upgrade after a single period of time. Um, well, uh, we would like to, uh, to end uh, this uh, overview of the experiences and feedback on the usage of the app in Bologna, in the sector panel around in Bologna, with a video that was shot at the closing of the second panel round in Bologna, with some, uh, uh, where some uh, uh, key actors, uh, protagonists of the, uh, of the, the, the groups uh, um, talk about their experience their feedback about this uh, uh, pile and round and this experimentation in these two uh, local territories uh, within the Bologna municipality. And then let's go with the video. Io sono Lola Valgimigli e sono una pensionata attiva nel sindacato pensionati della CGL. Il mio ruolo nel progetto Enable City come figura ponte è quella di promuovere l'attività sul territorio insieme al comune e al quartiere Savena dove si svolge la sperimentazione. Sono una figura ponte tra il comune e la società civile per promuovere, anche per trasmettere, comunicare, veicolare anche delle informazioni corrette sulla salute e il benessere delle persone. L'app è molto semplice e ha dei contenuti anche scritti ma con una narrazione molto amichevole. Partiamo. Vieni sul posto, ruotiamo avanti. È bello stare in gruppo perché poi fra di noi ci, ci aiutiamo con l'app. Queste piccole innovazioni vanno considerate come medicina di territorio. Sono Alvise Saccon, kinesiologo. Mi è molto interessato il progetto perché è una sfida per diffondere l'attività fisica negli anziani attraverso un'app, perché è un progetto innovativo e inoltre ehm, prevede le, lo svolgimento delle attività outdoor, che è importante per il benessere degli utenti a cui quest'app si rivolge. Il mio ruolo in quanto Physical Activity Manager è stato quello di gestire attività fisica di gruppo di circa un'ora e di portare i partecipanti all'utilizzo dell'app in modo tale da a fine progetto essere autonomi 
e praticare attività da soli con l'utilizzo del telefono. E nel corso della sperimentazione i progressi principali sono stati quelli nelle capacità di equilibrio e di coordinazione, nella propositività e nel senso di comunità che i partecipanti hanno provato nelle attività e soprattutto anche nell'utilizzo dell'app e nell'utilizzo dello smartphone. Ritengo che la partecipazione a questo progetto sia una grande opportunità per i partecipanti perché avere un'applicazione un che hanno sempre a portata di mano da utilizzare per eseguire l'attività fisica a casa o all'esterno eh, o in gruppo è utile sia per gli, eh, gli anziani, persone con disabilità oggi, ma anche per i futuri eh, anziani che saranno molto più abituati a utilizzare lo smartphone. Io sono Pietro e sono la figura ponte di questo progetto che si svolge nel quartiere Navile del comune di Bologna. Il mio ruolo è quello di fare da tramite tra, il, tra gli operatori iniziali che hanno organizzato il tutto e i gruppi che si sono costituiti nei vari quartieri, particolarmente quello a cui io faccio parte che è il Navile. un'app molto facile e semplice da usare. Oggi gli anziani sono circondati da strumenti elettronici, informatici, si devono necessariamente adeguare. Per mantenersi giovani eh, c'è necessità di sapersi muovere e in questo l'app l'ha centrata in pieno, suggerendo i vari movimenti che bisogna fare per quanto riguarda una migliore, un migliore tenore di vita, stare un pochettino meglio non soltanto fisicamente ma anche con lo spirito, con le relazioni che, comporta, che comportano questi gruppi. Sono Anna Maria Foggetti, sono una fisioterapista, eh, mi sono avvicinata a questo progetto perché è molto sensibile a tutti quei progetti che vanno nella direzione della prevenzione. Il mio ruolo è quello di PAM, che nell'acronimo è Project Activity Manager. È stato quello all'inizio di selezionare le persone per la formazione dei gruppi come appunto la sperimentazione prevedeva e di condurre i gruppi durante l'attività e l'esercizio di cercare di eh, supervisionare le modalità di esecuzione dell'esercizio per far sì che i partecipanti potessero svolgere gli esercizi in sicurezza attraverso eh, momenti di formazione avviati all'interno di ciascuna seduta abbiamo riscontrato eh, nella maggior parte dei partecipanti eh, un buon esito nell'utilizzo eh, del, dell'app. ho eh, osservato notevoli miglioramenti nella maggior parte dei partecipanti, che hanno migliorato eh, la loro postura, hanno migliorato il loro senso dell'equilibrio, quindi insomma anche eh, il loro modo di eh, apprendere ed eseguire l'esercizio fisico. So, uh, in the next part of the agenda, which is um, the achievements and lessons learned from the Naval Cities project, there was a first part that was about the findings of the project evaluation process and intervention impact analysis. Our colleagues from the Rathbo University Medical Care of Netherlands um, couldn't come today. They were the ones in charge of the, uh, in charge of the evaluation and they have recorded the video. Hello everyone, my name is Philip Vanewies and I'm a professor of allied health sciences at Radboud University Medical Center in the Netherlands. I would like to present to you the results of the evaluation of the physical activity enhancing program in the two pilots that we did in the Enable Cities project. We had two objectives for the evaluation. We wanted to obtain consistent and sustained knowledge of the impact of the two pilots in the program that we run. And second, we wanted to validate project outcomes in using the practical intervention methodology, which is the program itself, the citizen engagement strategy, how to engage citizens into the program, 
and the mobile app that we used for the program. We had six components of the, for evaluation, four quantitative and two qualitative components. First, we measured the impact of the program on physical activity levels. Second, we evaluated the use of the mobile app. Third, we evaluated the program itself by uh, asking uh, the participating healthcare professionals about their experiences. And we also evaluated the citizens engagement strategy by asking the experiences of communication managers. The two qualitative components were done through focus group interviews by evaluating um, the experiences of participating citizens and evaluating the experiences of healthcare professionals and communication managers. First, the outcome of affects physical, physical activity levels for which we use the CHAMPS questionnaire, which is a questionnaire that measures the amount, so the frequency and the duration of physical activities during a week. And what we see here is that at the start of the first pilot, um, if we follow the blue line in Bologna, uh, participants scored around 50 on that score and over the pilot, they increased almost to 65, um, sustained that level over the summer between the two pilots and then you see a little bit of a decrease of the slope at the end of the second pilot. The orange line is Sevilla La Nueva, where we see a slight decrease over the first pilot, which was actually quite short because we they started later in the project. Um, then an increase over summer in between the pilots. And when the second pilot started, you, we also see a decrease here in physical activity uh, of these participants. And we think that the decrease during the second pilot was due to seasonal influences because it was winter time and people inclined to be less active physically out, outdoors compared to summertime. The second evaluation was um, about the mobile app for which we used the system usability scale. And what we see here which, um, that in Bologna, people scored around 70, 69 points to be exact, and 61.7 points um, across the two pilots, and a bit of a lower score of 51 in Sevilla La Nueva. And this, the maximum score of this measure is 100. So people were okay with the app, but they were not super positive. If we look at the Evaluation of the practical intervention methodology, so the, the physical activity program itself, uh, we used three measures. We used a measure of acceptability, a measure of appropriateness, and a measure of feasibility. Three short questionnaires. And what you roughly can see here that overall in both cities, people score around three and a half to four points, both at the first and at the second pilot round for these three components. So overall, people were fairly positive about the methodology itself, so about the physical activity program. And we see similar outcomes for the citizens engagement strategy, which scores about 4.5 in Bologna and scores about four in Sevilla La Nueva, both at the beginning of the second pilot and at the end of second pilot. So people were overall positive about the citizens engagement strategy. The qualitative evaluation with the participating citizens showed that overall they liked the uh, physical activity program, especially the interaction with the physiotherapist. They thought that balanced exercises made them feel more confident. Um, and they also identified a need for more challenging exercises for some participants. Um, with the mobile app, they thought that this could, could be a good add-on to the personalized guidance that they got, but it's not a replacement for the guidance. They still liked having the interaction with the physiotherapist. Uh, they would like to see insight in the progression in the app, which is a feature that is currently not supported by the app. And they also experienced some problems um, like installing the app or using the app. And this was especially seen in older people. 
And finally, the evaluation of the um, a program with the healthcare professionals and communication managers showed that the physical activity program is adequate, um, but they think it needs a follow-up program because it doesn't catch users on the long term. Um, and the app may not be a good option for older people. Maybe in the future, when people are more used to digital uh, features and, and digital apps, but currently this might be a barrier. The communication managers were uh, happy with the engagement strategy. They thought it was effective. Um, they think that word of mouth is an effective strategy within um, the, uh, the strategy to get people involved into the program. And they think the strategy can be further strengthened by using formal and informal networks. So overall, our conclusions are that we think that um, there is an impact of the program, but scientifically we have to be very careful because it's it's unclear what the actual impact is because we had very small pilots and we had these potential seasonal influences which may have biased our outcomes. Um, we see that participating citizens are satisfied with the program and they feel more confident in their physical activity. And um, the program can be strengthened by tailoring group exercises and including a long follow-up um, for the program. Uh, the app serves as an add-on to the personal guidance by the physiotherapist, and we see room for improvement for the app. All in the end, we are quite happy with the results of our project, and we think there is a future for the program and the app. And currently, Bologna is actually looking into options into further using the app in their city and in their physical activity enhancing programs. Thank you very much for your attention. So um, we will then um, get to the next uh, part of, of the agenda then within this block, which is achievements and lessons learned from Enable Cities Project. And I will give the floor to, to Joao. Joao is uh, an, an adjunct professor and researcher at the University of Physiotherapy of Ponce. And he will be giving a summary of the recommendations that we have reached from the evaluation that again was performed by mainly Rathold University. So he will provide some recommendations on how to deliver these physical activity exercises to elderly people and people with disabilities. So Joao, the, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Victor. Thank you all. Uh, for me, it's a pleasure to be here. I will try to be as fast as I can in order to get on time in, on schedule. Uh, I will divide my presentation in three okay. parts. First of all, I will talk a, bit, a little bit about the uh, project intervention methodology. Then I will give you some feedback uh, from PAMS, our physios on the field. And then at the end, I will give you some final conclusions. If you can please change. So the final resort, uh, result of our desk research was the project, the practical intervention methodology. In this document, we gather information like uh, users, categorization, uh, types of exercises, exercise description, how to progress, um, and other useful information in order to build the best app that uh, we could. We could. Um, I just wanted to uh, remember our target population. Um, we have old adults, uh, people, old, old, old adults with more than 65 years old, and people with disabilities. Uh, as Irene already said, uh, people with disabilities, we need to think uh, more than physically. Uh, we included uh, all we try to think in all disabilities. Um, as you can imagine, it was really hard to, to do uh, some kind of categorization. So we built a five uh, levels categorization, taking into account the functional level of the user, uh, more specifically the walking skill. And uh, from one to five, uh, category one is for uh, persons uh, seated in a wheelchair and category five 
are persons that can walk alone without any kind of help. And for one to five, the, the, um, the functional increases. Um, as I said, it was, it was really hard to design exercises for such uh, a variety of functionalities. Uh, but, but yes, we did it. Uh, if you can please change slide. Yeah, the, here you can see two videos of, of, uh, um, that, that are on the app that we recorded. And uh, if you please can put the left one. Okay, on the left side, you can see a, a user from category four performing uh, an, easier, an easiest version of a normal push-up. Uh, it's from category four, four it's uh, an elderly person. And on the right side, if you can please press it. It's a user from category five, a visual impaired uh, user uh, performing a strength, as you can see, a strong man, <laughs> but he is blind. Okay. So apart from the videos, we developed um, a full description of each one of the exercises with also precautions in order to people that cannot see uh, can understand the exercise and for example people with a lower level of comprehension can understand uh, the exercise correctly so if you please can change okay uh, some uh, general recommendations about exercise prescri prescription. Uh, World, World Health Organization recommends between 150 and 300 minutes of aerobic exercise a week. That can mean uh, 30 minutes of walking five times a week. But we can do half of this uh, by increasing the intensity of the exercises. As Irene already said, uh, we we, we, we cannot just focus on this. We should include also short-term exercise, short-term efforts, and uh, we do a balance, flexibility, etc. And w regarding strength, we should focus on doing functionally with functional moving movements like pulling, pushing, uh, sitting, uh, uh, standing, exercises like um, uh, push-ups, squats, using uh, the user's own body weight. Um, we should think, of course, that um, we need at least three, t three sh sessions a week with between 24 and 48 hours rest between sessions. Um, and, uh, of course, it's better, as we as we already know, it's it's better to work out in small groups better than alone, and if it's possible outside, of course. If you please can change. Okay. This is some feedback that we collect from the pumps, the physios uh, that implement the the pilots. First feedback, it's an important one, I think, is that um, location is something crucial um, for the correct implementation of the session. A, a good place, a good spot with a good weather condition, with a not too crowd, etc. Um, that's a that's a key point, I think. Um, the variety of exercise is also important. The fact that the user prefer to exercise in group we, in the presence of the pump. And um, users really like the balance, the balance category. And we know and we noticed that when we combine balance with lower limb, with lower limb strength exercises, it adds um, great results on walking skills on these patients. So, if you, if you please can change. Final conclusions of, uh, after collecting all this information, 
af after the two pilot intervention, um, first conclusion we have is that PAM's present presence is uh, really important. They are the key uh, figure on the field, and we need to preserve them. <laughs> A second point is that uh, we need to find a solution to in, in order so that patients, uh, patients no, <laughs> users can still do the same functional movement without getting bored. So we need to have maybe um, some some kind of funny or groupal activities with some implements like, for example, a ball or some external focus exercise or some kind of ta task accomplishment so that the user don't get bored doing the same functional movement that uh, we need to do it, do this functional movement session after session because we need that uh, muscular adaptation and finally the importance of strength exercises um so rare so 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 rarely sorry prescribed until now but uh, um they are really important and surpri sur surprisingly uh, users like it so it's good to to implement also short term effort and please and this guides me to my final conclusion that walking is something good that we all know that it's good, but it's not enough. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, Gila, for your intervention. So during the round table, we will be speaking about developing inclusive urban environments for physical activity of people with disabilities and the elderly. And I would like to, to present the panelists. Um, first of all, we have Anna, Anna Lisa Boni. She is the Deputy Mayor for International Relations and Ecological Transition in the Municipality of Orania. Thank you so much for joining us. We have also. Um, please. We have also Esther Marie Darcy. She is the chairperson of the European World Physical Therapy, so I know her quite well. <laughs> And, well. yeah, too well. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have Javier Gómez Pedraza. He is the director of international relations of the ONCE, so of the ONCE social group and executive vice president on the, of the ONCE foundation of Latin America. Thank you so much for joining us. So we will start with Annalisa. Uh, Annalisa, the floor is yours. <laughs> okay. Good morning. Yeah, it's morning. Yeah. Maybe <laughs> lunch. <laughs> So thank you for inviting us. I, th I feel we are more from Bologna than in Bologna. <laughs> <laughs> and all women. OK, no, maybe to put, the, um, to put this project in perspective in the sense of, you know, how do we see it in our policies uh, from the political, let's say, perspective in a way? Because for us, uh, this is uh, a gem project. It's not a huge, one of those huge projects, you know, infrastructure and big investments and stuff. It's a, you know, small little gem uh, because in a way it captures and really reflects all the sort of important priorities that we have as a city. One of them, and more than three actually, one of them is, you know, the importance of social inclusion, the importance of, you know, fighting inequalities, the, the importance of really uh, not excluding people and having them uh, empower them as well. Uh, and that means also, that also, you know, goes through empowering them in physical terms. Um, and, you know, this year we've been scored the number one city in Italy from the Sole 24 Ore, which is an important, uh, uh, you know, research newspaper, uh, and for the quality of life. And that's also linked to public services and the level of and the quality of public services and this idea of including everyone, not, not having public services that do not manage to reach uh, everybody. So that that's really part of the of the ingredient. Uh, we also have a councillor in charge of uh, circular subsidiarity, which sounds very weird, 
but it's really like this woman has a very strong uh, focus on including and looking uh, at various target groups like seniors, like disabled and so on, and really try to uh, work with them and put together in, the, in a partnership of the city research, local authorities, volunteers, associations, you know, uh, all the sort of quadruple helix, if you see what I mean, around this uh, group so that the policy is uh, well targeted. So that's number one. The second is reaching climate neutrality quite fast. So by 2030, I know we're crazy, but still we want mm -hmm. to do it and making our city greener. Yeah. And that's really about uh, making sure that everyone can afford to enjoy some green space, public space. We say the 15 minutes, famous 15 minutes, you know, uh, uh, city for us, it's like 15 minutes being able to be in a green space by public transport. So that's that's a real important thing. And a lot of the recommendations that have come out are about more cycle paths. Uh, we want uh, more safety when we go around, when we cycle. But well, we have now in, uh, introduced uh, the speed limit to 30 kilometers an hour, which in Spain is very well spread, but in other countries is less. And it's very, very difficult to, to improve. So that's one big challenge. So that's really one uh, one second big priority that is included in that gem. That this pro gem project is really like enabled is really like including and 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 conveying. And the third is really about fostering research and innovation, data data driven policies, uh, digital tools to really reach a better quality of life. And you know we've seen how the app. Uh, has been part of the, you know, one way to to show that digital can be at the service of people and improving quality of life. And the research dimension too is very important in this. So giving a signal that we want to innovate and use digital for uh, inclusion as well. So these are the, you know, it, it conveys all that. But at the same time, it also uh, includes and captures what we call ourselves, our DNA, which is, you know, this participatory uh, method, this governance, <coughs> basically, that we we want to really work with with people. We have a very strong, you know, uh, participatory budget. Sorry, I, I woke up at three o'clock, so I'm a little <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. participatory budgeting. We work with neighborhoods, with labs, uh, to really ask people what they want uh, to do with this public, uh, with this uh, participatory budgeting. We uh, work with them on the on the big infrastructural uh, building sites that we will have. Uh, we work with them like on these kind of, uh, you know, projects. So it's a very strong, Bologna is well known in Italy for this participatory uh, work. And this idea of working on proximity. So the more you work, you know, the two guys that have, uh, one woman and, and the other guys that have uh, talked in the video are really connected to the neighborhood. So having these people that are neighborhood uh, based and, you know, working with also, and that's the second element of our DNA, this solidarity thing, this volunteer, we have a, uh, a real strong um, culture of volunteering. And so this makes, you know, the whole uh, thing work. But of course, it's, I mean, there are plenty of challenges. Uh, we know that. And, uh, you know, financing, <laughs> uh, bureaucracy, uh, politics, uh, the national government uh, with, uh, you know, regulations and so on. But still, I think that this, uh, you know, interesting project really manages to capture all these elements and, you know, show how you know important even small things uh, can you know do. So thank you very much, and I really apologize for have, having a ride fast and having to <laughs> <laughs> run fast as well. But yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Annalisa. It was really inspiring, and actually we feel your commitment with this project because Bologna act, and we will speak about that a bit later, my colleague Eleona will speak a bit about that later, that you are willing to actually continue with the outcome from the mm. outcomes of the project. So it, it will be really interesting to see how, how this develops. Mm. Of course, there are challenges, 
finances, I would say, is always the main challenge. Resources, yeah. yeah. But I have but... to say the team that has really pushed this uh, project is a great team and yeah. they've managed to, I, to make it happen. I agree, so. I agree. <laughs> okay, thank you so much, Annalisa. Okay, um, I guess that now it's up to you, Mr. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Lucky you. <laughs> I think what's coming across from from uh, Annalisa is really small, it's beautiful. Yeah, so I exactly. think that's uh, I think so. Um, so thank you um, on, on behalf on behalf of the. So take care. Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> um, on behalf of uh, um, uh, the European region, and indeed um, I'm speaking to you as well on behalf of the executive. We're um, delighted to be here and to be the coordinators of this project. I suppose it's uh, really as physiotherapists, it's um, in our it's in our blood as the representing the experts in movement and exercise prescription. Listening to the statistics uh, today um, that, you know, by 2050, 30% of, of the population in Europe will be over 65 and 80, over 80% will be living in urban environments and 45% uh, of people are not exercising. I think when you put all those together, these are staggering uh, statistics um, and uh, Certainly, there's a lot of work in there for physiotherapists. Um, um, and yet, we know as well from the feedback that um, those who do the exercises actually enjoy it. So we've got to really um, join up those, those, those two aspects. Um, I think that the evidence uh, is irrefutable. Um, exercise is a contributor to the prevention in so many of the, of the uh, cancers, about 20, 28 of them. I, I think it's also in terms of other NCDs um, such as obesity, diabetes um, and cardiovascular disease. And also, I think we mustn't forget that amazing correlation between physical activity and mental health. Um, so I think a very, very important um, one. These two categories of older people, I have to make an admission since last month, I hate to say it, but I'm in that over 65 group, or well, 65 group. Uh, so I still think I'm 20, so it's a little bit difficult to come to terms, um, to come to terms with that. I've moved from 18 to 20, so, um, but it's still, uh, when I see 65, I think, ooh, that's me. <laughs> it's, a little, it's a little bit um, scary, and I feel people are looking at you know, us with a uh, kind of compassion. So anyway. The other thing I suppose I'm concerned about in terms of physiotherapy is this group uh, of people with disabilities. And I think particularly for us as physiotherapists, so much of our work is involved in the rehabilitation um, of, of uh, people. And often there are people who've had a disability whom we rehabilitate, whose maybe life is now in a wheelchair. But I think that sometimes when the rehabilitation is over, those people are actually forgotten about and their actual general health is forgotten about. Um, and so this app, I think, is, is, is so important um, for, 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 this, uh, for, for this group. Um, I think the other evidence is irrefutable is, is the health economic impact of physical activity. And, uh, we, you know, we, I, th I think that's a really strong aspect um, uh, for, for us. And also added to that, that the outcomes for exercise that um, is taken outside um, is better than, than for inside. Uh, so physiotherapy, combining that exercise prescription outdoors is, is a much cheaper um, option and also has an ecological um, impact. The start of this project did precede um, the pandemic. But I think that it has accentuated the need in these in these groups. We, um, you know, acknowledge that that COVID had a, a huge impact on so many people and stole so many lives. But the impact of the pandemic, I think, is going to be greater. I think it has accentuated the the need for physical activity um, in these two groups um, from a <coughs> physiotherapy point of view. We look at decreased range of movement, uh, decreased strength, decreased flexibility, decreased muscle mass, uh, decreased bone health, bone density, balance, confidence, independence, respiratory and cardiac capacity. So everything that a physiotherapist um, does. It's an open bottle. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. 
Um, so leading to stiffness, weakness, frailty, falls, loss of function, and going from independent to assisted living to dependent uh, living. So this app is so important as we face that sort of tsunami um, of fallout from, from the pandemic. Um, and I think that there are lessons for us. Physical active, inactivity um, costs money. It costs the health service more. Physical activity saves money. If we are preventing um, the need, or we are preventing falls, then we are preventing all that cost associated with the classic sort of hip replacements, fractured femurs, physiotherapy, and prevention is a much cheaper um, option. Um, and the whole idea of prevention, obviously, is, is, is much cheaper. So we need to be prescribing exercise. It's cheaper. We need to be prescribing it in the open air. It's more effective. Um, and we need, in order to contribute to the health of our older people, and uh, people with disabilities, um, we need, I suppose as physiotherapists, we're well positioned to do this, but we need this app for the people in our communities uh, to, to work on this. And if I may just end with a little plug, um, Dale reminded, reminded me in terms of the talking about strengthening and looking at innovative ideas, a little plug for Ireland where my colleagues have just introduced um, a system with one of the county councils whereby you can go to your local library and instead of renting books, you can rent weights for your outdoor activities. So I'm very proud of that. Can't take any credit for it, but I'm very <laughs> proud of it. Um, but I just thought it was, you know, in thinking about this need, obviously of strengthening as well as movement, um, that this is a, is, is a great option. So watch the space. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Stamani, in this physical activity scheme. And we are, <coughs> we are, it's a message that we are trying to, to highlight today. Uh, now I will give the floor to Javier Güemes Pedraza. He will speak about, uh, again, about the importance of physical activity. <laughs> <laughs> so please, Javier. The floor is yours. Thank you, Hitor. Thank you. I don't know if I can add something new. I'm, I'm also considering that I'm not really an expert, but let me just say just some few ideas. First of all, thank you, and also... Uh, uh, Mrs. Rosa Staras and also uh, uh, Ms. Angus, uh, Alessandro Salva, thank you for, for, your, your, for hosting us. And let me just add just uh, four ideas that I think are important for us. First of all is that, um, you know, physical activity and exercise is a right. It's, it's a right. It's in the UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, Article 30. And it is really surprising <clears throat> when we analyze the different concluding uh, observations that our countries, Spain, Netherlands, Italy, have received from the committee, uh, none of them regards exercise, none of them. So this is why I think it's so important, this project, because this could help us to really put in the political agenda that the exercise for persons with disabilities and elderly people is a right that needs also to be monitored even by international organizations such as the UN Security Committee. I think it's also it's just important because um, usually the article, which is also linked to cultural life and is also very important, receives also always observations in the area of culture, but that not, does not receive any conclusion in the area of exercise and sports. So definitely I think the project will contribute for that. My second idea is that in the case of, of, of our contribution, I am very proud to say that in the site of uh, Onse Social Group and our University of Physiotherapy, all our professionals are also persons with disabilities. And I think this is really an added value. It doesn't mean that they are worse or better than others, but it adds value as well to the project because persons with disabilities themselves, professionals with disabilities themselves, have worked in this project and have applied all the knowledge they have from professional side, but also from their personal experience in the development of this project. And I think this is something which is very important. Third idea. I have to say that I work in international affairs and also work, as Aito has introduced uh, about my, my, my job, I also work in Latin America. And I can really say the enormous need of technical assistance that we have today in this area. <coughs> I remember quite recently there was a very enormous project 
that came from the Inter-American Development Bank for Colombia to improve their playgrounds for children with disabilities. And they didn't know where to start. <coughs> there was not really technical capacity to develop and to invest in how to modify playgrounds for children with disabilities in the country. So definitely here in Europe, and thanks to projects like this one, we can really establish some type of principles and technical assistance that will improve the situation for children with disabilities when they approach exercise and other type of activities for leisure. Finally, I would like to add just a thing. Um, I think it is very important, and the previous speakers, uh, the first one in this, in this round table, mentioned it. I mean, it's important to consider the, the, the finance and the impact that this can have. But definitely, we need to make this project fancy for local authorities. We need to make sure that in, even in those areas which are divided, the different modalities is a very technical approach. But at the same time, we need to understand that local authorities need to approach this in a very practical way. So when we are speaking about persons with disabilities, there is a big diversity. When we speak about elderly people, there is a big diversity. My colleague Irene was also mentioning how to really focus sometimes in the different needs, but really providing clear solutions for local authorities. <coughs> Otherwise, this will not be implemented at local level. So definitely, I think the project approaches this. Maybe we need a second phase to go even further, but definitely we need to really highlight that issue. And I would like to conclude that our University of Physiotherapy in Madrid, the Once University, is really one of our main uh, gems. I mean, it was used this word before, yeah. gems. <laughs> Definitely, you know, we are a group which is composed of 73,000 employees. 60% out of them are persons with disabilities. And our university is really one of the issues we are very proud of. It really creates professional opportunities for persons with disabilities and for blind people in Spain continuously. It is really having the highest standards in the physiotherapy, let's say, uh, um, rankings that you have. Um, thank you, Esther, for, for being with us as well. And definitely, uh, we will continue as on the social group investing, uh, supporting their work, and definitely having this reflected at international level. So thank you very much. And allow me just to thank also all the partners but especially also my colleagues and all the work that they have done for this and Irene and, and her team on this. Thank you very much. Sir. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Javier. Uh, indeed, um, I grasp what you said about you know, different conditions, and we, want, we, we focused on that during the project. We focused, or, or we, we, we knew that the people our target group, so the people with disabilities and the elderly people, had different conditions. Uh, I mean, it is not a co like a common group mm -hmm. with same um, conditions. Mm -hmm. It's very diverse indeed. So um, that was what I grasped from your presentation. Thank you so much. At the beginning of this conference, I briefly spoke about the importance of physical activity for mental health. Studies have shown that regular exercise can help reduce symptoms of anxiety and depression and improve well-being. As you probably know, mental health has become a hot topic at the EU level after the COVID-19 pandemic, most of all. <coughs> and the EU Commission is currently working on an EU mental health initiative that will be released this year. In the last months, us, European Women's Therapy, have been engaging with the European Commission in order for physical activity to play a key role in this initiative. Our next speaker is Alex Agius Saliba. Um, he is a member of the European Parliament. Thank you so much for attending. I know that your agenda is busy. Um, he's a member of the European Parliament, as I was saying, and he's a fervent advocate for mental health. He's a member of the MEP Alliance for Mental Health, which is an intergroup of the European Parliament that brings together MEPs and stakeholders who are interested in, in this topic. And he will, he will briefly speak about the role of, of physical activity in mental health. Thank you so much, Alex, again, for, for attending this meeting. So, first of all, sorry for being a little bit late, but uh, as Aitor has said, this is committee week. It's, it's the craziest week in our, in our calendar where we have to juggle between different committees and a lot of activities that we are also participating in. But before I delve into this very important subject, I would like to thank 
uh, enabled cities for organizing this very timely. Timely because, as uh, Aitor has said right now, it's a very crucial time whereby the European Parliament is pushing forward, especially those MEPs. And we, right now we have a lot of MEPs who are engaging uh, on pushing forward the agenda uh, toward, towards a stronger strategy, the first strategy, let's put it like that, to have the first strategy within the European Union on mental, on mental health. And therefore, it is really important because we all believe that um, physical activity and uh, physiotherapy play a very important role when it comes to mental health. Therefore, it is re really timely. And I would also like to thank uh, my colleague Rosa uh, Estar as also for hosting this very important uh, event. The topic of mental health was always a very uh, important topic for me, a close uh, topic close to my heart. Uh, and uh, I started immediately working on this topic uh, during the first weeks uh, of my of my legislature. But uh, with uh, the COVID-19 pandemic and its repercussions on our societies and the amount of visibility that the pandemic has given to mental health, I believe that today we have a better opportunity than we had in 2019 to advocate more for a more um, a more all-encompassing, let's put it like that, um, uh, mental health strategy. So the political push is there right now within the European Parliament. And as I said, it is the right time to push forward for more ambition and for a more inclusive uh, mental health strategy. And as I said, physiotherapy, physical health plays a very important, a very important role and should play a very important role here. And as a point of departure, we have already started lobbying directly with the Commission, with uh, our Commissioner for Health, Stella Kirikides, to also include physical health and physiotherapy as integral elements within the EU, EU mental health strategy. Uh, until today, it seems that the Commission is um, also on the same wavelength when it comes to physiotherapy and physical and physical exercise when it comes to combating um, mental health. So it's really important to continue to push forward in this in this direction. Why is mental health so important also at parliamentary level and why I believe we should and we must take a horizontal approach when it comes to mental health. Mental health is holding back prosperity. Uh, it's causing also a number of economic challenges and it's impacting negatively the quality of life of our citizens, of our people. The scale of the problem um, is not only affecting directly those who are um, affected by uh, mental health, but it's also affecting our societies, caregivers, families, communities, and also employers. So um, with, with, with the worsening of mental health issues during the COVID-19 pandemic now, with other external externalities such as uh, increasing inflation, the increase in food and energy prices across the Union, the mental health battle is more real much larger again than it was a couple of years ago and we should uh, continue to stress this point and increase the political the political visibility of the subject misunderstanding and the stigma surrounding mental health are widespread and they are still widespread uh, although we are continuing to push forward um, this agenda despite the existing of the existence of effective treatment for mental health disorders there is still belief that sometimes mental health is untreatable, um, that uh, mental disorders are difficult, that people having mental disorders are difficult, difficult to uh, deal with, that they are not intelligent, that they are not make, that they are not capable of making decisions. And the stigma can lead to abuse, can lead to rejection and isolation and exclude people from healthcare and also support. And since the pandemic, mental health disorders are of a major public health significance. It has been proved that physical activity has a lot of positive effects on mental health in both clinical and also non-clinical uh, populations. Mental health problems are a leading, um, 
preconditions of uh, years uh, of also years lived with disability uh, worldwide. Moreover, without intensified prevention and also management, the burden is estimated to continue to increase uh, in the upcoming years. And the consequences of mental health problems are devastating for the persons, they are devastating for our societies, our societies as a whole. A growing number of articles today are supporting from a scientific point of view, the relationship between mental health and physical activity. There is rigorous evidence today that physiotherapy improves mental and physical health in the vulnerable populations. Unfortunately, these efforts are becoming integrated into are becoming integrated into clinical practice at a very slow pace. Physical activity is not always considered to be a worthwhile strategy. The benefits of physical activity are twofold, as people with mental health problems are also at an increased range of physical health problems, including cardiovascular diseases and also obesity. Physical activity influences cognition and also cardiorespiratory fitness and reduces dropout due to a wide range of mental, problem, mental health problems. The health benefits of exercise are very clear, such as improved cardiovascular fitness, improved sleep, better endurance, positive influence on the metabolic syndrome and diabetes, stress relief, improved mood, increased energy, and also reducing tiredness. Moreover, physical activity helps to reduce anxiety, depression, negative mood, and social isolation, and improves self-esteem, cognitive functions, and the quality of our lives. I believe that the Commission should include, as I said, the important role of physiotherapy in mental health in its initiative, and we should ensure a strong voice for mental health uh, possible to better support the condition and the development and also in the implementation of its work when it comes to the strategy. This is some, some, somehow and something that MEPs supporting the, are, that are supporting the development or, of the strategy are pushing forward. And that is why, and that is why I said in my introductory remarks that this is something that is a priority for a number of members within the two intergroups that we have within the European Parliament to have physical health, which is directly, um, directly part of the mental health strategy. I'm also proud that um, as an SND group, uh, we were the first political group in the European Parliament who uh, adopted a strategy on mental health and physiotherapy and the effects, the positive effects of physical uh, exercise towards stronger mental health are also forming part of the strategy that we, that we have approved. A strategy that has already been presented to, to the European Commission and the strategy that would be also our guiding line when we are uh, also participating directly uh, in the impact assessment that the Commission uh, will hopefully be moving forward during the next uh, couple, uh, couple of months. Therefore, again, thanks for um, hosting this activity. I think this is the first activity that we are having um, with regards to touching upon the subject of mental health, but also stressing the point of how important it is also um, that that physical health takes a predominant role um, in combating mental ill health. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much, Alex. <coughs> and thank you for being such a strong advocate for, <coughs> for physical activity within this mental health strategy. We, we really believe that it is key that physical activity plays a really important role in this upcoming initiative. And before wrapping up the meeting, I would like to, to, to mention something that actually I'm juggling with the chat and, and everything. So I, I saw a comment on the, on the chat um, by an online participant saying that we could actually transfer the project's outcomes to other municipalities. Mm -hmm. And that's actually what we would like to achieve. We would like these project's outcomes to reach other municipalities so they can actually implement these outcomes in their own municipalities. They would need, of course, to adapt 
the, for instance, the exercises to their population. And for instance, they would like they, they would need to identify where in the city these exercises should be made. But this is actually what we wanted to achieve with this conference. We want this to 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 upscale, and we want this to be to be done in other in other cities. And actually, the municipality of Bologna, as I mentioned previously, is something that we'll do because this project has lasted for two years and a half. But actually, the municipality of Bologna is willing to implement this beyond the completion of the of the project. So I really thank you for this, and and hopefully we will reach other cities and. I will be really exhausting here. I will be, you know, um, networking with, with, with cities, with Euro cities, for instance, that Bologna is part of, and, cities. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, other, and other cities, so we can reach them, we can show them our project, and hopefully they can implement it in, in their own urban environments. So without further to do, Thank you so much for coming here. Thank you so much also for those who are uh, online. Thank you so much to MEP Rastaras for hosting the meeting and to her team, of course. Thank you to MEP Alex for coming. Thank you to everyone. I'm really, I'm really, I'm really lucky. I feel really humbled that all of you are here today. Um, thank you. <laughs>